I'd like to direct your attention to Isaiah chapter 51, the first and second verse. Hearken to me, ye that follow after righteousness, ye that seek Yahweh. Look unto the rock whence ye are hewn, and to the hole of the pit whence ye are digged. Look unto Abraham your father, and unto Sarah that bare you, for I called him alone, and blessed him, and increased him. Now, when it says, you that follow after righteousness, you that seek the Lord, that reminds us a little of what Jesus said in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 6, when he said, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. What you pursue determines your destiny. What you look to determines your destiny. We're told here to look to Father Abraham. He is our progenitor. He is the father of faith to them that believe. And in Galatians chapter 3, it tells us that Abraham, if we are of Christ, then we're Abraham's seed. So if you're a believer in Christ, a, a genuine Christian, then Abraham is your father, spiritually speaking, as the covenant partner of Yahweh. Now, what you look to is what you will walk in. That's why God said, look to Abraham and to Sarah. What you look to is what you will be conformed to. Okay, we're supposed to be conformed to Christ. We're supposed to be conformed to his word. But here we're given specific instruction to look to Abraham and look to Sarah. Because what you, where your origins are, you know, that's what determines where your destiny will be. And so it's so important that we consider Father Abraham. And that's why we're told to look to Abraham. As Abraham's descendants and heirs, we will be, now folks, you need to understand this, we will be who he was called to be, okay? Because we have his DNA, spiritually speaking. Because we have his genetic code in us, spiritually speaking. Who Abraham was called to be, and, and Romans chapter 4, verse 13, informs us that Abraham inherits the cosmos. He inherits the world. And the Greek word there is cosmos. So if that's Abraham's inheritance, that's our inheritance. And so we would expect, as children of Abraham, just like in the natural, we would expect children to have traits that their parents have, we have to uh, consider that we're supposed to be like Abraham and Sarah. So, and what I want to speak about in this message is very simple. Scotland needs fathers and mothers. Okay? This is a message about Scotland, God's land of destiny. Scotland needs fathers and mothers. And I'm not talking about in the natural. I'm talking about spiritual parenting. I'm speaking about fathers and mothers. Paul says you've got many instructors, 10,000 instructors in Christ. We've got a lot of teachers. We've got a lot of people uh, in the ministry, in inverted commas. But Paul says you don't have many fathers. Okay. So a lot of our leaders and a lot of our teachers and a lot of our instructors and a lot of people with ministries in inverted commas, they're not necessarily fathers and mothers, okay? So if you're in the ministry, as in you have a, a sort of a public face of ministry, then you need to ensure that you're a father or mother in terms of relating to others because... You know, it's, it's easy to tell people this is how things ought to be done. But fathers and mothers walk the walk, okay? So we're called and destined to be like Abraham. He's our father in faith. This applies to Father God, of course, as well, that we're supposed to be like our father. And it applies to Father Abraham. Just as Abraham walked before God and he had to be metamorphosized into him, he had to become like God the father, his covenant partner. So we must look to Abraham to be like him. Now, it's, <clears throat> excuse me, essential to our study here is the truth that Abraham 
is the father of many nations. That's what his name means. His name was Abram, which means high father. But God wanted him to be the father of more than just Isaac. God wanted Abraham to be the father of multitudes of people, many nations. So he changed his name to Abraham. Uh, and this is what his, his name means, the father of many nations. Now, let me just say this. If you're supposed to be like Abraham and Sarah, then that means you're called to be the father of nations. You're called to father nations. You're called, like Abraham was, to be the father of many. Not just Isaac, his miracle child, but to be like uh, him, uh, to father many, many people. Many, many multitudes of people. Many, many uh, children are supposed to be your portion, if you understand that. Okay? So, we're all meant to be like Abraham and Sarah. Now, Sarah was also the mother of multitudes, the mother of many nations. Uh, and so that's our calling to walk in that. That's a mandate that we have to be like, like Abraham, like Sarah, like, like they were. Now, um, they said about Rebecca uh, that she was to be the mother of thousands of millions in the King James and that her seed was to possess the gate of those uh, which, which hate them, which hate God's people. Now, listen, it says also in Genesis 17, verse 16, that Sarah is known as the mother of nations. So this isn't a man-only thing. This isn't a gender-specific thing of fathering. It's fathering and mothering. So we need fathers and mothers in Scotland who will take responsibility for the nation, take responsibility for the people, take responsibility for unsafe folks as well as safe folks. And that responsibility will probably, principally, unless God leads you into something, which he probably will, but, but really we start from a place of we do it in prayer, we do it in a place of decree, we do it in a place of the prayer closet, that we, we become fathers and mothers because like fathers and mothers in the natural we pray for our children, and our children are those that are in the harvest. We'll look at that in a minute. So you can only father effectively if you're a mature son or, or mother if you're a mature daughter, if you like. Again, we're not being gender specific. These terms are really spiritual terms that denote maturity more than they denote gender. So you're a father or a mother because you have matured. All right? So important. Uh, you, know, you know, when you preach this message of maturity, a lot of people kick back against it. And I'll tell you who kicks back against it uh, are people who have an unhealed father wound or an unhealed parental wound. You know, uh, you know we laugh about it. We call it daddy issues, mommy issues. Um, but, you know, it's no laughing matter. You have to have that healed. If you have hurts that came from your... Uh, natural parents, or even from uh, parents that you may have had mentors in the, in the church, you have to have those healed, okay? And a lot of people recoil against that. A lot of people would rather relate to Jesus uh, than the Father because they've got father wounds. Jesus is the elder brother. Jesus loves us. But the Father is seen as stern, foreboding, uh, unapproachable. And that's not so. You have to have your father wounds or your parental wounds healed to become an effective, mature son and daughter who walks in that, uh, for want of a better word, a mantle of a father and mother. Okay? Remember, Deborah says, I arose a mother in Israel. So the nation needs fathers. The nation needs mothers, spiritual, mature saints of God who will take responsibility for the spiritual destiny of, we're talking about Scotland right now, but every nation has this, but folks, we're in the land of destiny. That's where I'm preaching from here in Glasgow right now. And we need this. Okay? The body of Christ needs it. So I'm addressing the father in you here. I'm addressing the mother in you here. You may be displaying aspects of immaturity, but like Isaiah, I adjure you, I enjoin you to look to Abraham because as you look, you will conform to that image. All right? So um, let's get a little bit 
uh, secular here. There's a scene in the Godfather book and in the movie where Don Corleone, the Godfather, tells Johnny Fontaine to stay with him for a month so he can see how a real, fa- a real man lives. A real father, a matured man. And we need that. We need to see maturity. We need to see it in our own lives and then we need to uh, speak it in others' lives and encourage them to be mature. When you look to a true father, something of that father is transferred to you. You become who you look to. That's why you need to look to Abraham. You become what you look to. Uh, That's why Paul said you can have the 10,000 instructors, but fathers are much more rare. If you want to lead nations, if you want to impact nations, if you want to inherit nations, you must learn to father them. Okay? This is done by looking to the father of many nations, God's covenant partner, Abraham. What you gaze at, you will become. Now, Abraham is the template for mature believers. He endured to become a father of the seed of promise. He overcame the limits of his own body and the impossibility of his situation, which was that Sarah was barren all her life, but but then she went through the menopause. But God's promise, Abraham held on to, and Isaac, of course, was, was born. So you need to look over the impossibilities of your situation to Father Nations, to turn Scotland to the purpose of God. To turn your nation, wherever you are, to the purpose of God. Now, it is the overcomer, the, sorry, the overcover, sorry. It is the overcomer company of matured sons who will step into nation fathering. All right? This is not for immature believers who value the physical life and soulish entertainments. You cannot be a friend of this world if you're going to father nations and peoples, because you're above that, okay? Scotland needs dedicated fathers and mothers who won't get sucked into the ideology and the spirit of this age, which sadly has been running rampant in Scotland. If you're going to harvest, and we've been talking a lot here in the Revival Centre a lot recently, about harvest, the harvest that is to come, multiplies, sorry, multitudes and nations are your destiny. Multiplied peoples, multiplied gatherings of people. In other words, bringing in the great harvest, which has long been prophesied, think Jean Darnall and others. If you're going to walk in that, then you have to be intentional about it, but you also have to understand that it's going to come to fathers and mothers. It's going to come to people who are capable of handling the harvest. A lot of people have said in the past that, you know, if you if you don't, uh, if we're not ready for the harvest, then how can we look after them when they come in? Well, that's where fathers and mothers come in. You know, we speak a lot here, and I do, I preach a lot from it, from Isaiah chapter 60. And what I want to do just now is show you from Isaiah chapter 60, we talk about it in terms of the harvest, but I want to show you right now from Isaiah chapter 60, that it speaks about fathers and mothers, okay? It implies that the Isaiah 60 generation is a generation of fathers and mothers, of matured saints, a matured saints company. Isaiah 60, uh, verse 3 says, The nation shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of thy rising. So we're not looking for a few folks to come in and, you know, maybe double our congregation and our churches and all of that. We're looking for nations, multitudes and nations. And what's important is the kings that come with them. Lift up thine eyes round about and see all they gather themselves together. This is one of the verses that caused us to start the gathering here in the Revival Centre, our Saturday morning meeting. And it's called the gathering. Because it says, lift up your eyes and see they will gather themselves together. They come to thee. Thy sons shall come from, a, from far and thy daughters shall be nursed at your side. Your daughters will be nursed at your side. Your sons will come from far. Sons and daughters. Sons and daughters 
speaks of harvest, but it also speaks of parenthood. If you've got sons and daughters, you're a parent. You're a father or you're a mother because you have sons and daughters. When you sit as a father in your designated place and calling, your sons and daughters will gather and come to you. Yahweh brings those who need father to mature fathers and mothers in the nation. So you need to be a mature father or a mature mother so that you can see this harvest because they're coming to you. We need to prepare for multitudes of children. Now, you know, think about this. Perhaps one of the reasons the church has not received the harvest that we've been looking for, the large harvest, is because God is not looking to bring sons and daughters to ministry professionals, but to fathers and mothers. There's a lot of people who are ministry professionals. Listen, there's a lot of people that idol is ministry. And I'd say probably ministry is the hardest idol of all to topple because when you think about it, that was what Lucifer's undoing was. He, he valued what he was doing so much, but, but it, he wasn't in ministry as in he wasn't really serving. Eventually, he, he served himself. And we need to be careful in the ministry that we don't serve our own agenda, we don't serve our own interests, we don't serve our own desires, we don't serve our own visions, but that we are servants of God and his purpose. Now notice here that sons and daughters come to those who have risen and who have God's glory upon them. They're not going to come if you don't have the glory. Not to the same extent. Now, I'd encourage you to read Isaiah 25. speaks about the difference between Shebna, the mercenary leader, and Eliakim, the authentic leader. And Eliakim means God who rises or God will raise up. There are, are Eliakims in the earth, and they have a father's heart. In fact, it says in Isaiah chapter 25 that Eliakim is a father to Jerusalem, a father to the people, a father to the folks, a father to the nation, if you like. He's a father to the nation, a father to the city of Jerusalem. He's a father to the inhabitants of Jerusalem. He's a father to Judah. He's a father to the nation and a father to the people in that nation. Kapara Shontoro Masai. Fathers are called to raise up children into maturity in order to raise and develop children. You need fathers and mothers. Now, look at this. I want to put it to you. Nations fall, society disintegrates because there aren't enough fathers and mothers. Fathers impart to their children what no mentor or teacher can. Uh, we need fathers and mothers. And I'm not talking about in the natural, I'm talking about in the spiritual. Continuing in Isaiah chapter 60, it says in verse 9, Surely the isles shall wait for me and the ships of Tarshish first to bring thy sons. There it is again, sons. Sons implies fathers and mothers. Their silver and their gold with them unto the name of Yahweh thy God and to the Holy One of Israel because he has glorified you. Children come with silver and gold because Isaiah 60 speaks about an economy under the Melchizedek order. That's a whole different message, but it's tied in with us. If you want to see wealth transfer, you're going to have to see sons and daughters coming with silver and gold and the wealth of the nations coming in. That can only come into a glorified people and it can only come in to mature people. These children are drawn to the name of Yahweh that is upon us. Children will pay tribute to spiritual fathers in the Melchizedek economy. And that's coming to Scotland, folks. That's why it's, right now the battle is so fierce. Because the enemy knows it's coming and he's trying to stop it or hinder it or thwart it or at least delay it. Now, Verses 10 and 11, the sons of strangers shall build up thy walls and their king shall minister unto thee. Even foreigners, the sons of foreigners, that's speaking about second, third, fourth, whatever generation immigrants, I believe. It's speaking about that. What he's saying is that people from other uh, faiths, other uh, ethnicities will, I believe it's saying they'll, be, they'll, they'll come and become Christian. And we welcome that. Amen. In my wrath I smote thee, but in my favour have I had mercy on thee. 
Uh, and it says, your gates will be open continually, uh, that men may bring to you the wealth. Now, what we need to understand is this, okay? Even children of other fathers will want to serve the Eliakims that Yahweh will raise to father nations. Children are coming. Sons and daughters are coming. Will you be a mature saint of God, a father, a mother in Christ, uh, fully conformed to Christ, fully conformed to his image, fully conformed as well by looking to Abraham and Sarah and understanding that that multiplication blessing that was upon Abraham, upon Sarah, has been transferred to you. You see, fathers and mothers uh, uh, fathers and mothers, because they multiply, <laughs> because they have children. And again, I'm not speaking in the natural. I'm speaking in the spiritual. You know, you don't want to be barren spiritually. You want to have multiplied sons and daughters. Uh, and, you know, it's not all about, well, let's get, uh, let's all become evangelists, or let's hand out a thousand tracts a week, or whatever. It's not about that. that that's part of it all. But I believe it all starts in the place of prayer. You become a father and mother in the place of prayer. Let me just say this to you. You can have parental instincts, particularly mothers have that. You don't need to be saved to have that. Your know, mothers have a fierce love of their children. It's an unbreakable thing. You can have all of that. You can have good parental skills uh, in the natural and you can have a, a real heart for your children in the natural. But you don't really become a parent until you're standing before the throne of God on behalf of your children in prayer. Or until you're standing before the devil and rebuking him for even daring to touch your child. You become a father and mother in the secret place, in the closet, the prayer closet. So let's start being fathers and mothers to Scotland in that place of prayer, in the prayer closet. Let's be, and I'm not talking about begging and squalling and bawling prayer, uh, you know, just, you know, I beseech thee, Lord. I'm talking about making decrees. I'm talking about speaking the Abrahamic blessing upon our children. And again, when I say children, I'm speaking about the harvest that's to come. Let's speak the harvest in. Let's say to the, the north, the south, the east, and the west, bring my sons and daughters. Bring those sons and daughters that I could be a father to them, that I could be a mother to them, so that we can see the great harvest that God intends for Scotland, that has been prophesied for Scotland, that we all pray for and long for. Let's take an active part in that harvest now. Jesus says, say not ye that there are four months to the harvest. Don't say that. You're saying there's four months to the harvest, Jesus says. But I'm saying, look to the fields, they're white already. So let's speak that harvest in and believe and we will see. Sons and daughters coming that we will father and mother, if you like, into a place of maturity and the harvest will keep on growing. The Lord bless you and please take these words to heart and act upon you know faith without works without corresponding action is dead so let's step into that place of being fathers and mothers let's start right now i'm going to lead you in a little prayer pray it along with me and then that'll be us for this message father we just ask right now that you will help every single one of us to become fathers and mothers in the family of god like abraham like sarah we look to them that we won't be parents. Already we see with the eyes of faith our sons and daughters coming, the harvest coming. We see the glory upon us that attracts them. We believe it. We receive it. We're walking in it right now by faith. In Jesus' name, amen. Till next time, folks, the Lord bless.